Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Kingdom Wealth Prayer, our midweek regroup where we just pause everything that we're doing and we refocus on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to welcome everyone into this space. As you enter into the space, I just want you to let go of everything that you've been thinking about, everything that you have set before you, everything that's happened for this week behind you. And I just want you to be present in the moment. We God says in the scripture that he is that a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. And at this moment, at this hour, we want to literally transcend time, space, and matter and be present in our Abba Father. We want to be present in our Abba Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for this time of allowing us to gather in your presence. As we enter into your presence, Father God, I ask you to wash us with the blood of Jesus Christ from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Wash away every iniquity, every sin, every, anything that we have done that has grieved your spirit, Father God. I ask you, Father God, to cleanse us and purify us from the inside out. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that your word says that you made a way where there was no way, that you sacrificed your only begotten son, Yeshua HaMashiach, so that we may at this season, at this moment, come before you naked and unashamed. Naked and unashamed, Father God, cleansed and purified by the blood of your only begotten son. I thank you, Father God. I glorify you, Father God, as we enter into your word, Father God, I ask you, Father God, I, I, as a matter of fact, Father God, we don't ask because you said you have given us dominion and authority. So right now we dispatch the angels of the Lord in Christ Jesus to marshal the boundaries and borders of our sphere of influence. Allow only those that you have called and ordained to enter in for we rest in the shelter of the almighty God and we abide in your shadow. Let your ministering angels march around us. Let that march create a cadence that repels every diabolical assignment that the enemy has tried to thwart towards us. Let it propel and protect us, propel everything that is not of you. That every, every chant, every incantation, every wrong way of thinking, every wrong way of living, I decree and declare it broken right now, Father God. We present ourselves as a living sacrifice unto you, Father God. Speak to us. Father God, we are in a season and in an hour in our life where we need a word from you, Father God. We need a word that divides our spirit from our soul, cutting through our flesh, our bone, our marrow, cutting through our anxiety, our fear, our hesitation, our doubt, our disobedience, Father God. We ask you right now to give us that rumor word from your mouth to our hearts, Father God. We thank you right now that you are a God that answers. We thank you, Father God, that you are a God that hears us and sees us. Your word says that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So we thank you right now that as we enter into your presence, Father God, that we have an encounter with you, a fresh encounter, a fresh zeal, Father God, a fresh anointing, Father God. Let us encounter you in a way that we have never encountered you before. We ask you to, Father God, speak to us. Speak to us. Let it cause a trembling and a shaking that breaks off everything that is not of you. We thank you right now, Father God, for the ministering angels. Holy Spirit, blow profusely uncontaminated and unhindered upon this line. And as you blow, blow your breath of life within us. Speak to us like never before. We thank you for this hour. We thank you for this season. We thank you for this moment. We honor you and we glorify you. Father God, help us to be holy for you are holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. You are not just the God of a Bible. You are not just the God of our ancestors. You are not the, just the God that is spoken about, but you are our true and living God. And we honor you and recognize you as 
our Lord and Savior, that you are our master, you are our redeemer, you are our savior, you are our king, and we worship you. We worship you. We lift up our hands unto you, holy and blameless before you in love. I command everything that is misaligned to come into divine alignment according to your original plan and purpose. I decree and declare that we are best in our blessed in our psychological system, that we are blessed in our physiological system, that we are blessed in our hematological system, that we are blessed, Father God, in our lymphatic system, that we are blessed in our skeletal system, that we are blessed in our workplaces, that we are blessed in our sight, we are blessed in our hearing, we are blessed in our doing, we are blessed in our seeing. Father God, we thank you. We are blessed in our hearing. We thank you, Father God. Father God, for that which you have blessed can no man curse, and we walk in the full in the abundance of thus says the Lord. We thank you for the here and now. We thank you for this moment, for this hour. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father God. We worship you, Father God. We glorify you, Father God. You are a holy God, a just God. Father God, make us holy for you are holy. We desire to be all that you have called us to be. Father God, we thank you right now for a paradigm shift. We thank you right now for repositioning our feet, Father God, to be firmly planted upon your word. We thank you, Father God, that we stand on level ground. How robo shikaraba. We bless you, hallelujah. We glorify you, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We glorify you. I thank you, Father God, that we are not our mistakes. We are not our past experiences, but we are you who you have created us to be. We thank you, Father God, that we embody the fullness, expand our wits, Father God, so that we may expand us so that we can have wider wits and deeper depths within you, Father God. We thank you, hallelujah, for freshness and newness in every area of our life. Father God, let your newness, Father God, transcend from us, Father God. Let it be a sweet effervescent aroma, Father God, that draws men nigh unto us, Father God, unto the God within us, Father God, that they may encounter you through us, Father God, just as we have encountered you, Father God. Let that encounter, Father God, cause an about face in every area of their life. Hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah, that, Father God, we are, Father God, the catalyst, Father God, that you have strategically planted, Father God, in the neighborhoods, in the cities, and in the countries, in the schools, in the workplaces, Father God, in our friend groups, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you have strategically placed us, Father God, to be the light amongst the darkness. And let that light shine profusely father god i blow the breath of the lord your ruah kadosh father god into the fire that you have placed within us and i cause the fire of god to ignite and rise with us even the more father god a greater fire let us be a blazing inferno father god that incinerates everything and everyone that father god just by our presence in the place father god it causes father god chains to be melted father god the mouths of lions to be shut plans of the enemy to be nullified incantations and witchcraft witches and warlocks their chants and incantations to be muted out and nullified right now father god I thank you right now for the fervency and the fire of God within us. Open up the windows of heaven, Father God. Come up off your throne. Your word said in Jeremiah that you yourself, Father God, would come up off your throne and rescue us. Well, we need rescuing today. I decree and declare that we need rescuing today, Father God. Father God, we are growing weary, Father God, but we have faith faith like a mustard seed, Father God, to do what you have called us to do, to stand firm on the promise that you spoke to us in the midnight hour. We stand firm upon it, Father God. We are not deceived by what we see or what we feel, but we stand in the fullness, Father God, knowing that you are not the son of man, that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should change your mind. We thank you right now. We thank you right now, Father God, for the passing. We thank you right 
right now for the coming. We thank you right now for the transitioning. We thank you right now for the apprehension. We thank you right now, Father God. We bless you, hallelujah. We bless you, hallelujah. We glorify you, hallelujah. In Jesus' holy, holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Well, that was a welcoming prayer. If you receive and you are ready to hear the word of the Lord, type an amen in the chat. Type an amen in the chat. I am excited. God has just been really dealing or and not even dealing, but showing me some things. And I want to share those things with you. As you all know, we are in the book of Exodus. And we are still, we're still going to be here in chapter two, because there's a lot going on here in chapter two. Type a one in the chat if you've actually started reading the book of Exodus after we pray about it or before we pray about it. Type a one in the chat if you are really stepping in and leaning into with intention into this word that God is ministering, because God has a word that he is releasing for each and every one of us. God has a word that he is releasing for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. I see the amens coming through in the chat. Hallelujah. I want you to, I want you to really think about what God is saying here. So let all of us have heard the saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. How many of you all heard that? Type a two in the chat if you've heard that. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now, when we listen to that, that's really what's happening to Moses here in chapter two. That's really what hap what's happening to Moses here in chapter two. And I want to declare on this hour what happens in Goshen. So Goshen is the area where the uh, Israelites um, were actually, that's the city that the, is the Egyptians put the Israelites in. They were living in Goshen. So I want to say what happens in Goshen stays in Goshen. So we're going to read um, Exodus chapter two, verses 11 through 15. And that's going to be our reference scripture for today. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched them at their labor, at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people, looking this way and that way and seeing no one. He killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you the ruler or judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you kill the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a wall, by a well. Selah. What happens in Goshen stays in Goshen. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now, this is a, this is a campaign slogan that nowadays really signifies any scandalous activities that that are being trying to be kept hidden. But we know that everything that is done in darkness must come to light. And I want to ask you right now: Do you think that God likes you? All of us know that we that God loves us, but do you think He likes you? Especially in those times when you're not doing what you know you're supposed to be doing, when you're not uh, saying what you're supposed to be saying, you're not thinking. T type a two in the uh, type of actually we already did one and two. So let's type a three in the chat. If sometimes you struggle with the fact that, you know, God loves you, but does he really like you, especially when you're operating in your ugliness? Type a three in the chat. I'm a type of three in the chat for me. I struggle with it because I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what God has called me to do. I know what, how God wants me to behave. But to be honest, sometimes Nancy just come out and I, be, I either say stuff out loud I'm not supposed to, or when I don't try to say stuff out loud, my face says it all and I be saying it out loud with my face. How many of y'all say something out loud with your face? <laughs> or how many of y'all say something loud with the energy you're giving off? We know we're not doing right. And, and I struggle with the fact that I don't know if God really likes me, especially when I'm doing something I'm not supposed to do. And I'm like, well, Lord, it ain't really, I'm not really 
doing it wrong. I'm just finagling the system. I ain't really doing what I'm supposed to do, but I'm finagling the system. I'm at, so I'm still doing it, but I'm just not being blatantly, openly disobedient or disrespectful or out of alignment. Like that professional nastiness. How many of y'all are good at professional nastiness? Like I can send an email real quick that says per our conversation, basically saying like, Heffa, did you not hear me the first time? I know you was in that meeting. So we've sort of mastered in this world how to be professional nasty. And this is basically what Moses was going through. And the first response was for Moses to run away from where God had placed him. How many of us, when we do something and we do something really that we think is really, really bad, how many of y'all, our first response is, I can't even look, I got to run away from God because I know he don't like this. I know he don't like me right now. I know he don't like me. I know he loved me, but I know he don't like me. So I'm going to just stay away because I knew I did something that was uh, out of alignment for what he, how he called me to act and behave and think and speak. And it doesn't even have to involve somebody else. It could be something that God has asked you to do, whether it's consistently reading your word, whether it's doing something on time, because we have a tendency to take for granted the time that we have upon this earth. And that is the one commodity that we don't have. In today's passage, I really want to talk about, uh, about Moses. And let's talk about the background. Moses was the adopted prince of Egypt. Um, went out to where his own people were and watched them at their hard labor. So a lot of scholars, if you read about this, believe that Pharaoh's daughter never concealed Moses' Hebrew heritage from him. She may have even allowed him to communicate with his people because that was her son. She wanted him to know where he was at. She had adopted him as her own. Now, here's something you may not have realized. According to, to the um, theologian Charles Ellicott, was his name this wasn't a mere visit that is uh that is here spoken of but a complete withdrawal from the palace so not only did moses run away but he completely denounced he renounced his position in the egyptian um kingship because he was a prince he was the son of pharaoh's daughter so he had lineage, he had legacy, he had kingship over him from the Egyptians. And this one incident, because he thought he was exposed and he was embarrassed, he was ashamed, he was scared. And his first reaction was to flee and leave everything behind. Some of us are in situations right now where we flee from that individual, we flee from that situation, we've run as far as we can from it. Some of us have even moved states, changed jobs, whatever the case may be. Some of us have even um, renounced to where we came from because we don't want anybody to know that I grew up here or that I lived in this area or that I, that I know these individuals. So we disassociate ourselves. We completely renounce that what created, cre helped create us to who we are today. This passage is telling us that Moses had left behind his royal position and instead resolved to venture with them and for them. So he left everything behind. And this is, if you read Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, you'll see that this is confirmed. And then it says that he surveyed the trouble of his, of his fellow man, of the Israelites, and he saw an Egyptian taskmaster beating a fellow. Like he saw somebody wailing on one of the Israelites. The Egyptian was wailing on one of the Israelites. And then basically, you, all of us have done it where you look to the left, to the right. You're like, see who watches. I want to see if anybody looking. If you don't think nobody looking, what he did is he then killed that individual and then hid his body in the sand. But friends, I'm going to say this, what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. What happened in Goshen doesn't stay in Goshen. Word got around amongst the Hebrews who even called him out for it. Like the ones that, that you believe you're doing it for are the ones that are going to call you out for it. And not, so not only are you going to have to renounce them, but you're running from everybody that you knew, everybody that you connected with, because they're the ones that called you out. If I'm talking to somebody right here, type an amen in the chat. If I'm talking to somebody right now, if I'm talking to somebody right now, type an amen in the chat saying, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Because what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. 
word got out around, among the, Isra the Israelites and the Hebrews. Same, same. So what did Moses do? He fled to Midian. He not only left Goshen, he left Egypt and went to Midian, which was almost 800 miles away. That's like going from Miami to Raleigh, North Carolina. That's literally that far. He walked that because they didn't have cars. They didn't have planes. He walked 800 miles. Imagine the fear that was among him. Imagine the, the, the anxiety, the stress, the depression in those 800 of walking those 800 miles of what he must have been going through. The mental torment must have caused some insanity where he was mulling over his own thoughts and his interactions, the life he's leaving behind. Like, what have I done? Oh my gosh, this is not only, it, it was an abomination. He killed another human being. And I want to point out that this is one of those descriptive, but not pres prescriptive passages. Moses committed an egregious sin here. He murdered another man. And there's really no justification for this. Moses had neither a legal office nor a divine call justifying him to take him uh, to uh, make taking somebody else's life. Basically, he was an executioner. And then instead of owning up to it and facing the consequences, what did he do? He fleed and not just fleed. He ran for his life, literally. And this shows us a lot. This shows us how as human beings, our natural response is when we do something wrong, when we think that God doesn't like us, when we do something we know that God didn't like, what do we do? It doesn't matter how big or small it is. What do we do? We flee from God. It shows us that the Bible, the other thing that it shows us is that the Bible doesn't hide the sins and shortcomings of the people. It highlights Moses is the second is the third most person um, na named in the Bible besides Jesus and Abraham. I want you to think about that. And he was a murderer. He was a murderer. And his first response was to flee, to run away. I need you to know that God already knows. He doesn't, it, it, we have to distinguish that the things that we do or the things that we say, they're actions. God doesn't like our actions, but he always not just likes us, but he loves us. Just like if you think about it, when a child, your niece or your nephew or your grandchild, when they do something, you don't like their action, but it doesn't mean that you don't like them or that you don't love them. I need you to understand that this is the God that we serve. That innate instinct to love and like someone is really a, a, an individual personal state of mind that the enemy uses to cause us to, to run away and hide from God. And I need you to know now that it is no longer time for us to hide from God. This passage also shows us that the Bible, like literally, Moses was a murderer. I mean, David, David was an adulterer and a murderer as well. It shows us that God can and will still use us to accomplish his good purpose, even though we're sinful and imperfect. And our transgressions do not disqualify us from God's good, pleasing, and perfect will for our lives. I need you to know that there is nothing that you could ever say or do that would nullify or disqualify you from fulfilling the vision, the call of God that is upon your life, the vision, the thing that God has shown you. I don't care how long it takes you, that thing must come to pass the same way that it, that God spoke a word and divided the, the heaven, uh, the seas, the sky from the sea, the, uh, the, the dry and wet ground. I'm sorry. I'm losing my thought here. He's, uh, he divided the heavens from the earth. He put the seas in the water. He called the birds to be there. Like everything was there. He said, let there be light. There was light. Y'all remember it. I ain't got to read it. Everyone has read that. And if you haven't, go back and remind yourself. Nothing that we could say or do, because once God releases it from, releases it from, releases it from his mouth, it must come to pass. I need you to know you cannot disqualify yourself from allowing God's vision, God's purpose in your life to come to pass.
God knows everything about us. Before he even laid the foundation of the earth, he knew you. He said, "He, I knew you before I fashioned you in your mother's womb. He already knew every sin we'd commit, every selfish impulse we'd have. And yet he still delights in delivering, redeeming, adopting, and indwelling in us and having a relationship with us. God already knew that we was trifling. God already knew that you was going to run off with that dude. God already knew that you was going to blow that money. God already knew you was going to cuss that person out. God already knew you was going to be in them streets. God already knew, but yet he still chose to birth you and purpose you for his glory. You are qualified because God qualified you before you were even born. And there's nothing that you could do. And because his purpose must be fulfilled in your life, he will perpetually, without ceasing, deliver you, redeem you, um, and have a relationship with you to accomplish his great work in your life. So at this point, I need you to just shout for joy because I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm excited that I cannot mess up this, this thing that God has spoken over my life. I'm excited that no matter how hard it gets and how, how far away I run from God, I know that he is always going to be right there. That as soon as I stop, imagine this, Moses ran 800 miles from Miami, Florida to Raleigh, North Carolina. And remember, God positioned him in Miami, Florida. When he ran to Raleigh, North Carolina, and if he would have at any point in time stopped and turned around, God would have been right there behind him in his face. That is how God is concerned about you. He is in your business. Right now, I want you to think. I, I, I'm going to read Hebrews 11 to prove to you that God is urging us to live a life worthy of the calling that we have, according to Ephesians 4.1. We're going to read a re Hebrews 11, 1, 12 through 3. If you receive this, I am not disqualified. I need you to type in the chat. I am not disqualified. I am not disqualified. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through chapter 12, verse 3. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the uh, ancients were com commended for. By faith, we understood that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah was warned about things not yet seen and holy fear built an ark to save his family. By faith, he was condemned. Uh, the, he condemned the world and became their right the heir of righteousness that comes by faith by faith abraham when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance obeyed and went even though he didn't even know where he was going by faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country he lived in tents as did isaac and jacob who were heirs with him at the same of the same promise for he was looking forward to the city with four foundations whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, I mean, Sarah's womb was basically dry, was unable to become the father because he considered him faithful, who made the who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead was at the time, because he was a hundred and some years old, 
came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands of the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about the, his bones. By faith, Moses' parents hid him from for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as the greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He perceived, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people heard, had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell, talk, tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Japhat, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shut the mouth of the lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword? Whose weakness was turned into strength? And who became powerful in battle, rooted in, uh, rooted foreign, uprooted foreign armies? Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released, so they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sewed, sawed in two. They were put to death by the word sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, dis destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are rounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is easily entangled. And let us run with perseverance and re the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you, you, everyone on this line, everyone that you know that is a believer of Christ Jesus, so that we, have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten that word of encouragement that addresses you as sons. God said, my sons, do not make, the li make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes everyone 
he accepts as a son. I need you to understand right now that God has called you. He has chosen you. And the fact that you feel like running away from him lets you know that you have faith in him, that you believe in him because you wouldn't be running from someone that you didn't have faith in. You wouldn't be running from someone that you didn't want to disappoint. You wouldn't be running from someone that you thought would judge you or not like you or hate you. You are running from God because you know he loves you and he likes you and you don't want to do anything to disappoint him. God is not judging you based on what you said or what you did. He already knew everything that you would come out of your mouth, even those things that are not spoken. He knows you intimately. He weaves you in your mother's womb. And I need you to know that in this season, in this hour, the reason that the Bible is filled with individuals that committed egregious acts against God, murder, adultery, fornication, whatever it may be. God wants you to see and know that even in spite of their egregious sins, I still use them for the power and glory of his kingdom, that their purposes will still be fulfilled. And because he, he is not a respecter of persons, if he did it for them, he's going to do it for you. I need you to have heart and have faith. Never lose faith in the God that chose you. If he said it to you, he's going to do it. If he spoke it to you, he's going to make it come to pass. It must come to pass. You are chasing a thing that God gave you. And this says you will never ever feel at home in anything that you're doing here. Because as you're going, God is going to give you more and more clarity in the vision. You're going to learn and you're going to grow. But I need you to have faith in knowing that in in all that you're doing, God has called you. He's going to make sure that you never sink, that he's created an ark specifically designed for you so that you will not sink in the waters. You may get a little wet, but you're not going to sink. It may be quiet for a little while because imagine Noah as a baby in the, in the uh, bushes, in the weeds among the Nile bank. It was quiet and still for a while. But after a while, God came and rescued him. After a while, God will come and rescue you. You just got to hold on. I need you to continue to have faith. Father God, right now, I pray for everyone that is on this line. Open your hearts, hearts and your ears. If you're in a place, lift your hands up and receive the word of the Lord. Father God, I thank you right now, Father God that your sons and your daughters are before you at this hour because we believe in you. We have faith, Father God, that you are our God. We have faith that you are the, the true and living King. We have faith that you have called us and chosen us for a time such as this. We have faith in you, Father God. We love you and we honor you. Speak to us like never before, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your power and your sovereignty. We thank you right now that you, Father God, will never leave us for no sake us for nor forsake us father god we glorify you father god let the fire of god ignite and encourage us father god let it be father god the fire father god that draws all men nigh that draws resources nigh unto us that draws divine relationships nigh unto us that draws father god divine opportunities nigh unto us father god that draws divine father god synergies uh, onto us father god i decree and declare that that every prophetic word that you have released over each and of, of one of our lives that is in alignment with your original plan and purpose, I propel it into the realm of the spirit for other intercessors to pick it up, reinforcing the angelic hedge of protection and the promises of God over our life. Father God, encourage us. If we, Father God, even have an inkling, uh, Father God, of a, of a, uh, has, of a, of an opportunity, Father God, or a, a, a thought to run away from you, Father God, cause us to fall, Father God, that we may fall upon our knees, Father God, that we may fall upon our knees and cry out unto you, Father God. Teach us how to draw and run towards you and not from you. Teach us, Father God, how to trust in you. Teach us how to be still in you. Teach us how to hear your voice, Father God, so that as strangers we shall not follow. Teach our mind how to be still. Teach our hearts how to be still, steadfast, unmovable, and unshakable in you, Father God. We glorify you, Father God. We we bless your holy name, Father God.
we glorify you. If you are holding on to guilt from the past right now, or if you are fearful that your mistakes and sins have ruined your ability to walk in God's plan for your life, I need you to know that God isn't done with you. If you know that God isn't done with you, type he's not done with me in the chat. Type it in the chat, hallelujah. Please know that God isn't done with you. He can still use you and work in you and through your life and he still has a plan for you. If you're walking in unrepented sin right now, we, I ask you to bow your head and ask God to forgive you. Whatever that thin, sin is that comes into your mind right now, I ask you to tell, ask God to forgive you. Father God, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me, Father God, of my unrighteousness. Forgive me, Father God, for being disobedient obedient. Forgive me, Father God, for lying. Forgive me, Father God, for de for delaying. Forgive me, Father God, for doubting. Forgive me, Father God, for any sin that I've committed, known or unknown, committed through a commission and omission. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you. I thank you that through Jesus, we are forgiven and free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that we are free. We, I thank you, Father God, that despite of all of our past transgressions, sins, and shortcomings, you still delight in having a relationship with us and to use us, Father God, to accomplish your great purpose in this world. Father God, I pray right now that you would forgive every sin of each and every one of our lives. Guide us into righteousness in those areas by your spirit and lead us into your will. In Jesus' holy, holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you receive the word of the Lord, type an amen in the chat. Type an amen in the chat. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory.